Hey there. Subscribe to my channel. And also press this bell icon. So you never miss any new updates cause whenever we upload new video you will get a notification on your phone. Welcome to Module 7. Conclusion The purpose of this module is to summarize the key learning points from the IWCF Level 1 e-learning program. At the end of this module, you will be asked 30 questions based on the knowledge you've gained throughout the modules. Don't forget that on successful completion, a certificate will be generated which you can print off and keep. So, why are you here? You may recall that in the introductory module we talked about the Deepwater Horizon drilling rig incident on the Macondo field, which resulted in the loss of 11 lives, major environmental damage and massive costs for the industry, and how following this the International Association of Oil and Gas Producers recognized that all who are involved in any way, in any operation during the life cycle of a well should have training to understand well control. Whilst many measures have been put in place to prevent a reoccurrence, we continue to have well control incidents in every part of our industry. We must continue to advance our efforts to prevent a reoccurrence, and you are the critical element in this. So what have you learnt? Hopefully, as a result of the IWCF Level 1 e-learning modules, your basic knowledge and understanding of the life cycle of a well and the different processes and operations which take place has improved. By taking this opportunity to increase your knowledge of our industry, you've made a step towards committing to protect the environment, our industry and all those who work within it. We must not let an incident like Macondo happen again. Let's take a quick look at what you should have learnt in each module. It may have been a while since you visited some of these modules, so this might be a welcome recap before you complete the final exam. In Module 1 we looked at some of the early uses of crude oil, for example for embalming and lighting. We outlined the origins and growth of the oil industry, looking at the birth of the motor car and technological advancements in the 50s and 60s. We then looked at how developments in technology and drilling for deeper wells has led to an increased risk of a major accident. We've discussed the impact of major well control events and highlighted what can happen when these risks are not managed. We also looked at why geology is important to the petroleum industry and explained how hydrocarbons are formed and where they're found. Finally, we identified different methods for finding oil and gas with particular attention on the seismic survey. In Module 2, we looked at the basic life cycle of a well. We started with the drilling process and identified the main components used such as the different drill bits and how mud is circulated through the well. We then looked at the casing and cementing processes which are carried out prior to the well being completed and a Christmas tree installed ready for production. We finished by looking briefly at well intervention and workovers and when they might be used before going on to describe how a well is plugged and abandoned under different circumstances. In Module 3 we described what a drilling rig is and how they work by looking at the drilling equipment that is used. We also looked at the various types of drilling rigs such as jack-ups, semi-submersibles and drill ships and identified the different locations where they operate. These locations ranged from on land in deserts or jungles to offshore in remote, deep water locations. We ended this module by looking at the well-controlled equipment that is used during a kick. In Module 4, we defined some important terms used in well control such as hydrostatic pressure, formation pressure, overbalanced, underbalanced and tripping. We looked at the various ways kicks can happen, for example through abnormal formation pressure, failure to monitor the well, incorrect fluid density or lost circulation and described how kicks are detected. We then identified the first actions to take when a kick is detected and how to make the well safe again by removing the formation influx from the well bore and circulating the correct density of mud. Finally, we highlighted the key people involved during a kick and their responsibilities 
as well as looking at the meaning of empowerment and the importance of the need to create an operational environment where the obligation to do the right thing is known, authorised and expected. We also briefly discussed the importance of human factors in drilling and well control operations. In Module 5, we covered well interventions and workovers in more detail and described how and why these are performed, for example during mechanical failure or a decrease in production due to the build-up of solid hydrocarbons. We also identified under which circumstances you would use each method. In Module 6 we defined some important terms used in pressure control during well intervention operations. We identified what can go wrong during well intervention planning and operations and described the first actions that should be taken when a pressure control situation arises. We looked at the plugging and abandonment process in more detail and identified the people involved and their responsibilities in the event of a primary barrier failing. Finally, we re-emphasised the importance of empowerment and the need to develop a make safe then investigate culture rather than having to seek permission to take action once a pressure control situation has been detected. We also briefly discussed the importance of human factors in well intervention and workover operations. Just before we move on to the final exam, you may wish to revisit and review some of the module content. If you do, simply close this browser window and re-enter the module of your choice. If you're ready to proceed to the exam, click the next button to continue. It's now time to take the final exam, where a pass mark of 70% needs to be achieved. Take your time and only click the Submit All button when you're happy with your answers. If you fail, you will be able to resit the exam. You're advised to review the module before doing so.
Thank you for completing this training module. We hope this will help you in your workplace. Remember you can revisit this module at any time to refresh your knowledge.